Friends, my, my sermon this morning is called Go See John. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. That was a good galloping hymn we just sung. You know? Two years ago, I had a uh, terrible, recurrent, bad cough. Kathleen, no doubt, remembers this. She was across the office hall from me. About the second day into it, my wife Lori says, you should go see a doctor about that cough. Now, what do you think my reaction to that suggestion was? <laughs> nah, I mean, I'll be all right. I'll just go get me a bag of Hall's cough drops. Yes, like my father did before me. So I went and got, you know, the blue menthol hauls and the cherry hauls, two big bags, and I took them with me everywhere I went, and they worked great, you know, for at least 30 seconds <laughs> after taking them. Go see the doctor. Soon I was hearing that from most of the people that I saw very often, and I'd be like, you know, I can handle it. It will go away. It will work out. I don't need his help. There's something about going to the doctor that's so submissive. You know what I mean? I guess that's kind of the point. <clears throat> you know, you got to make the appointment and then you got to admit on the phone what your problem is. And then if you go, you wait in the waiting room. And my doctor's office somehow always has reruns of the Beverly Hillbillies playing super loud. And then they call you back, you know, and then you got to get weighed. Gross. And then uh, you got to go to this room with the butcher paper on the, what does you even call that thing? It's not a chair. It's not a bed. It's in a, What? An examination table, oh, no, I don't want that. I don't want to be examinated. And then, you know, then the nurse comes in, you gotta tell her your problems. And then you gotta wait in 59 degree comfort, <laughs> right? For the doctor to grace you with his presence. And he comes in you know, with the light thingy in your ear and up your nose and down your throat. I mean, who needs this? So it was about day seven of my cough that I started coughing so hard one night that I almost threw up. Have you ever had that happen to you? And this time, Lori, she puts the voice on me. <laughs> That's it. You're going to the doctor. And I said, okay. And it was all just exactly as I had suspected. The appointment call, the Beverly Hillbillies waiting room, the nurse, the weighing in, the paper covered table, the 59 degrees and the light down the throat. But then the doctor, he writes me this prescription for cough syrup. It will also surprise you, I'm sure, to learn that I am one of the worst cough medicine takers in the history of mankind. <laughs> Kelly here will testify that when I used to take cough medicine when the kids were still living with us, they would all gather around to watch me <laughs> take cough medicine because it goes something like this. I take it and I smell it. And when I first start smelling, I start going. <laughs> <laughs> then I take it. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> it's like this contortion of <laughs> like demons are coming out of me when I'm. <laughs> 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 but I took the medicine. And I'm here to tell you, it had magical healing powers as it went down my throat. That night, as we went to sleep, my wife heard a blessed sound she hadn't heard in days. Silence. It turns out I only needed four doses of that stuff. It took less than half the bottle for that cough to be kicked. Seven days I went needlessly. All I needed was to go see the doctor. Me going to the doctor is a lot like the way we live our lives as Christians. Let's look together at our gospel reading today from Luke chapter 3. I'd love for you to have it out in front of you. Um, it's on page 7 there in your bulletin. 
In this passage, we hear about the ministry of John the Baptist, the one crying out in the wilderness, preparing the way for Jesus. We see in this passage a long quotation from Isaiah chapter 40, verses 3 through 5. You can see that there at the bottom, right? It looks like poetry. Do you see what it describes? Look at it with me. Filled valleys, lowered mountains, crooked paths made straight, rough ways made smooth. We want Jesus to do these sorts of things for us. Yes? You know where you are today. You know where you are. Maybe you're in a low place. That needs rising. Or maybe you're facing a high obstacle that needs lowering. Maybe you've got a complicated path ahead of you that needs some straightening. Maybe you're in a rough patch right now that needs smoothing. So we come to Jesus needing help. But what is the help that we are seeking if we're honest? <clears throat> it's about like me going to the doctor. We've made Jesus out to be our Hall's cough drop when we need to submit, admit, and commit coming to him as our doctor. With me? It's like me and my cough. We say, I've got it under control. I know what to do. It'll get better. I don't need that much help. So our Paul's cough drop prayer to the Lord Jesus goes something like this. Lord, give me a little help to accomplish my plan. Just give me power, Lord, to stay in control. The cough drop. Let's consider now instead John the Baptist. John gives us a map to the Lord Jesus. He can help us find and submit to him so that we can receive the help that our souls actually are in need of. The medicine that will coat all our inflammations and the salve that will give us finally peaceful, silent nights. Go see John for the map. Lowered mountains, crooked paths made straight, rough waves made smooth. Only Jesus can do that. I had to go see the doctor. We need to go see John. John, I thought Jesus was the doctor. Well, he is. But John will help us get cough drop Jesus changed to Dr. Jesus. Am I making sense up here so far? Say yes. Listen, going to see John involves the wilderness, repentance, and forgiveness. It's where we can at last admit I cannot fix myself. It's the place of submission, of surrender, of replacing your strength for God's, your plan for God's. Let's go see John. Look at the first two verses of our reading here with me. Do you see this? Luke gives us an incredible gift of placing John's ministry in time. He, of course, wouldn't have known A.D. and B.C. dating that wouldn't come until 800 years later he wrote this. But placing this in the context of secular and religious leaders of the time is Luke's way of saying this was A.D. 26. And I'm particularly fascinated by his interest in Abilene. Why he knew what was going on in Texas in A.D. 26, I don't get. But, you know, as a Texan, I appreciate it. How about you? Well, this is true for you and for me this. We need, to cons we need to surrender and admit to Jesus in time. We need to make it today. How about today? Will today work for you? The word of God in time comes to John in the wilderness. In the other gospels, it's even clear that the people had to come out to John. John didn't come to them. The wilderness, the Greek word for that doesn't mean like piney woods. It means a solitary desolate place, a place of no resources. Go see John. Leave your place of strength and confidence and comfort and journey out to the place of no resources alone. Come to Jesus and bring, hear me, nothing with you. For many of you, you're in this place already. You just can't bring yourself to admit it. You still think you can do it. If only cough drop Jesus would come and help me. Instead, 
How about in the first year of President Biden, when Abbott is governor and Nuremberg mayor, when Reed is bishop and Mickey is rector, go see John in the wilderness. Pray today, today, empty-handed. Have nothing to offer. Admit you can't heal yourself. Go to the wilderness. And in the wilderness, what do you do? Repent. Repentance is not our favorite thing. If I ever finish preaching up here, we'll pray a confession of sin together. Liturgists call it a general confession, meaning that it's worded in such a way that we can pray it together and we don't have to be too specific. That's my favorite. Yeah, I like my confessions general. But listen, this is why I need to go see John. We need to go from the general to the specific. I've got these issues that I need repenting of. In Advent, have you noticed that we wear purple, the same color as we wear in Lent? Why? Because repentance is key to our preparation. Repentance positions Jesus as our Savior and not as a helper, as the doctor and not the cough drop. The word Luke uses for repentance means to change your mind, to change on the inside. Repentance, hear me, isn't admitting what you're doing is wrong, knowing full well that you're going to do it again. No, repentance is saying to Jesus, I am before you changing my mind about this issue of sin in my life. I'm turning from it and in, and in, in return receiving your help and power to change to stand up to it so that I can live a new life. Repentance is the doctor, not the cough drop. It is being sorry, grieved, and determined to change and be different. It's saying, I cannot stay the way I am for one more moment. It's saying, I've had enough of this cough. I need it gone and I need help, Lord. I can't stop coughing and there's nothing I can do about it. I thought I had control of it, but I'm confessing to you that it has control of me. You with me? It's saying to Jesus, help me, help me. I repent. Go see John. The wilderness, repentance, and then forgiveness. John points to an incredible truth here. Jesus doesn't leave us in repentance, aren't you glad? He forgives. Do you believe this, that Jesus forgives? Two of you believe this. This is good. I'm in the right, I'm preaching to the right congregation then. I'm going to try this again. Do you believe Jesus forgives? Yes. You do? I'm glad because I wonder about this if you do. Because here's why. The problem among many with the cop drop approach to Jesus is that you understand forgiveness, but you never actually feel it. If Jesus is just some help to you and not a savior to you, you'll in a minute pray your confession and you'll intellectually appreciate it for a moment, like the 30 seconds of a good cough drop. But you never feel it. You're never healed. You never receive it. You got to follow the map. Go from your place of strength and comfort to the wilderness, the place of no resources. There, repent, be sorry, and want to change your mind. Say, I cannot fix my cough. It's only then that you can receive and feel forgiveness, right? Do you see? Forgiveness is the cough syrup. It's the medicine that your soul needs today. Go see John. John, who before Jesus even got started, pointed us to the cross, the cross where Jesus paid the penalty for the sin that you deserved. You know, we are so busy fighting for our position and for our success, pointing, protecting our pride. When Jesus was born in humility, leaving his place of glory in heaven, we armor up and defend ourselves. When Jesus paid the penalty for our sins on the cross, he lived the life we didn't want to live and he died the death that we deserve to die. And when you can see that, you can see your sin 
on the Lord Jesus on the cross. You can see that when the Father looks at you, he doesn't see your sin, but instead the righteousness of his Son, Jesus. You can feel then the Holy Spirit working in your mind, encouraging your heart, strengthening your body. All that guilt and that shame you've been carrying around for all those years, you can drop. You can walk through this old life with its low valleys, high mountains, crooked paths and rough ways, forgiven and free. Jesus is coming. We remember his incarnation at Christmas. We anticipate his coming again here in Advent and we pray together, amen, for his advent in our hearts today. Jesus, friends, he comes to us in holy and spiritual power. He's like this eternal, limitless, loving, perfect, and infinite bottle of medicine. Come to put us, to put the world back together with healing in his wings. He is not passive, he is strong. He's born in a manger, but he is neither meek nor mild. Go see John. The wilderness, repentance, forgiveness. Because, beloved, Jesus is the valley lifter, the mountain lowerer, the path straightener, the rough way smoother. His promise is here and it's for you. How do I know? Because all flesh shall see the salvation of God. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen.